The difference between a good teammate and a dead one can come down to just how well you understand your weapons, armor, and the rest of your kit. And sweet liberty did we just get some new toys. My name is Commissar Kai, and today I'll be showing y'all the biggest winners of the new 60 day patch, and how we can use them to help our team cross the finish line. Whether you're a stealthy saboteur or a juggernaut of freedom's judgment, this latest batch of weapon and stratagem improvements is bound to have helldivers from across the fleet singing the praises of Lady Liberty. We got a lot to go over today. So let's get into it. First, I want to address some of the grumbling I've heard around the fleet about how slaughtering the enemies of humanity has become too easy. While I admire the steel required to make such a statement, I only have one thing to say on the topic. Stow that belly aching cadet. Those freedom hating losers have never stood a chance when the hell divers come a knocking. Back in my days of crawling through the mud and blood of the creek, we didn't have your fancy recoilless rifles, primary weapons that actually killed things, or orbital napalm barrages. We had breakers, 500 kgs filled with party poppers, and one orbital precision strike shared between the whole platoon. And we still stacked more steel than the new deep mantle mining facility. So if command sees fit to give me a senator that can pop a Hulk's eye in three shots, I will gladly share my glee with every liberty damned bot I can see. We've finally been given the tools we need to march on Cyberstan and penetrate the gloom. So let's go kick the hornet's nest and see what those raw materials have to say about it. <clears throat> Anyway, now on to the list. These ain't in any particular order since everything you'll see in this video is already a winner. But we'll start with the more generally useful stuff and make our way up the ladder to the real game-changing weapons and stratagems. First up, we have my baby, the Senator. I've always loved this sidearm for its medium penetration and intimidation factor, but now it's a whole different animal. This beast is the only primary or secondary weapon in the armory to now come with heavy penetration. For those of you that also can't be bothered to read the intel briefings, this means it can now do things like this. I'm coming. I'm bringing my senator. I'll resupply after it. God, I'm not. While popping charger heads is a bit of a gimmick requiring somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 shots, being able to tap out hulks with only three shots is a real game changer for team play and loadouts on the bot front. Having a sidearm capable of taking on these insecure dwarf bots means we no longer need to be so concerned with bringing a support weapon to handle them. Instead, we can focus more on team play oriented options like the shield relay or the auto cannon sentry if we feel so inclined, or some of the other heavy hitters we can now access. For example, Prior to this patch, Helldivers might feel pressured to leave light armor penetrating weapons at home when they made their way to the bot front. But with the change to the Senator, and the verdict, honorary mention of Mr. Helldivers' favorite weapon, you can now bring those weapons safe in the knowledge that if anything chunky gets too close, you can enlighten them to the error of their ways with what must be at least a 50 caliber round. This means weapons like the R63 Diligence, the Sickle, Tenderizer, or even the Pummeler are much more accessible for teams looking to spice things up when fighting the bots. The same applies to the bugs. Having a pocket magnum to handle a bile spew or alpha commander that gets too close makes things like the base punisher shotgun even better than it already was. Hell, it even helps the team play since you have multiple senators firing in the same direction. Whatever you're shooting at will soon be sent off to the nearest refinery for processing. For outstanding prior service and for the unique abilities that it gives you, I am pleased to present the senator with the Big Iron Award. <laughs> I'm so proud. Next up, we have the sentries, specifically the MG, Gatlin, Rocket, and Autocannon varieties. All these little murder machines got a huge glow up by means of a massive reduction in their cooldowns. This might not sound like much, but before this patch, you need to be careful about when and where you deployed your little hate-filled freedom helpers. Now you can chunk these down pretty much any time you want to fight something. And just like a true capitalist, you can set these puppies up to defend an objective or hold a bug breach and sit back while you enjoy the fruits of their labors. Each of these sentries now enjoys a flat 30 second reduction in their cooldowns. This cooldown reduction means that with all your ship upgrades unlocked, you'll be calling in these little murder machines down every two minutes. The MG Sentry on Bugs deserves a special mention since this little monster is available every 70 seconds. With a lifetime of 150 seconds, this means you can even get multiple of them up, assuming the first one doesn't run out of ammo. Since this thing is basically an ornery MG43 with aimbot and a blatant disregard for the lives of you and your teammates, it has shot to the top of any self-respecting stratagem tier list on Bugs. Being able to call down an MG Sentry every time you see a patrol of hunters or a bug breach gives you and your team a ton of breathing room that just wasn't available prior to this patch. Its bigger brothers, the Rocket, Gatlin, and Autocannon sentries are no less impactful with either an absolute hail of bullets or incredibly hard-hitting armor penetrating ordnance. So castle up and see how high you can stack them bodies. Alright y'all check this out. Uh, J4 look up. 
<laughs> I emoted and didn't take hardly any damage. <laughs> <Nice. to loot. laughs> Next, we got the shield relay on bots. This one might still need some tweaks, but the coverage and damage absorption have been massively increased. Just be aware that now, when it breaks, it stays broken rather than regening itself back up. So why, you might ask, is this thing included in the you have to try this video? Well, take a listen to how my team felt about it after our first game using it. That is a lot of shit. We get a shield generator. <laughs> I love that we just keep asking them through the whole mission. Y'all got any more of them shield generators? Sure, it might break easily. And sure, it makes every bot nearby become consumed with hatred, causing them to fire blindly at your freedom bubble. But with only a 75 second cooldown fully upgraded, you can deploy this thing whenever you want. Maybe you need to make a wall for your team to slip away into a snowstorm. Or maybe you need to set up and prepare for a big bot drop. Either way, the shield relay will serve you and your squad well by blocking those rockets and giving you a chance to get a clean shot in. Since it can soak up a lot of damage before breaking, as long as you don't throw it out in the open against just a horde of bots, you can combo it with sentries of the HMG emplacement to double down on your castle doctrine. This is an incredibly potent combo that's readily available throughout a whole mission, while still providing that crucial utility for your team. Don't sleep on it is all I'm saying. It's worth a try on bots now. Coming up next, we have heavy armor. Now with top of the line ballistic plates rather than the egg cartons and cardboard we had last week. Heavy armor finally feels like heavy armor especially on bots. For example, this would have absolutely killed me in a prior patch, but now I can casually saunter through Storm's last fire without getting cut in half by a random heavy devastator around a corner. This has tons of implications for loadouts on bots, since now you can play that juggernaut role you've been dreaming of without regularly getting reminded of your own mortality. Perhaps you wanted to play as a backline field medic and stim up your friends while they sit on an HMG emplacement. Or maybe you want to grab a ballistic shield and a crossbow and show the bots the strength of your faith and freedom. Either way, now you can hold your ground without folding to a sneaky little bot bushwhacking you from behind. Combined with the Hulks losing their plasma cannons, it's easier than ever to play as a tankish role on the battlefield. Just be wary of headshots, since getting hit in the dome with a heavy enough weapon will still send you to the Wall of Martyrs in a hurry. To be honest, I have not tested heavy armor out on bugs because I don't hate myself. But if you are one of the special few that enjoy this playstyle on bugs, your armor just got 25% better. So enjoy, you crazy SOBs. If you're anything like me, you might not like running around like the Michelin Man while a horde of bugs tries to eat you. But you should like this video. That one click is the best way to support the channel and manage democracy by spreading the good word of cooperation and team play to the rest of the fleet. If you're in need of some new friends to try out all our new toys, then enlist in my platoon by clicking the Discord linked in the description below. My commandos are the most active Helldivers in the fleet, and we all embrace the spirit of teamwork and cooperation. Swing by to check out the Stroopwafel method of team play or to get a sneak peek at our new bot team play strategy. Project Pantheon. Now let's get into the real fun stuff. Run. <laughs> yeah. Oh, y'all, the frag grenades killed Miles Spears in one hit. One of my personal favorites of the new patch, the G6 frag grenades on bugs and G12 high X grenades on bots have really come into their own as grenade options. Prior to this patch, I hadn't really used either of these beauties since I was a wee cadet slogging through the lower levels. But with both of them getting double their base damage, now they're extra spicy. G6 frags on bugs have quickly become one of my favorite grenades, since you can now take up to seven of them with grenade armor. They also pop bile spears with just a single grenade. So throw them at packs of bile spears, under chargers, into big hunter packs, at your friends. Sorry, I got carried away or chunk them at nearby patrols to really stack up them kill counts. They're also perfect for closing bug holes, which really frees up space in your loadout for things other than the grenade pistol or explosive crossbow. The G12 high explosive grenades are an actually viable choice on bots now, doing twice the damage of regular impact grenades with the same heavy penetration. If you cook it right, you can toss these on top of tanks to take them out in a hurry. But my favorite use of them is against patrols. Just one grenade can completely take the bite out of a bot patrol by wasting all the devastators in the blast radius. Anything that survives is going to be weak enough for you to quickly handle with your primary or secondary weapons. They might not be the absolute top tier grenades, but they're getting close. I do also have to give an honorable mention to the throwing knife, which got a massive capacity increase from 8 
all the way up to 20. Since you can completely fill these out with resupplies, you can chunk them with reckless abandon at whatever is crowding your personal space. They're also a neat tech choice for stealth gameplay since now you don't have to be as concerned about running out of knives. I don't think these are amazing now by any means, but they are certainly much better than they used to be. Well, give him a new face. Oh, wait, wait, back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up. Back up. Whoa, wait. Dive. Oh, shit. <laughs> Calculated I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> If y'all know me, then you know I saved the best for last. These next three weapons are so incredibly strong that they can completely change how you and your team approach gameplay, especially the last one on this list. But enough teasing, let's talk about the new Scorcher. This weapon has seen its ups and downs through the months, but with the last patch it has finally found its identity as a rapid response to medium enemies. Now coming with a full auto mode and expanded magazine, the Scorcher is an absolute menace on both fronts. On bots, it'll scythe through combat striders and the little bots while still hitting devastators hard. You will need to watch your ammo with only six total mags with 20 shots each. But with how hard the explosive damage combined with the rate of fire hits, it feels like the perfect primary. What I mean by that is it doesn't feel overtuned, but instead it feels like a solid and dependable primary weapon. On bugs though, it's a slightly different story. This thing murders Brood Commander Alphas, Bile Spewers, and Charger Butts, which is why I say it changes how you can play the game against this faction. With an easy answer to these enemies from your primary weapon, Taking things like the Stalwart MG43 or the Laser Cannon has just become so much more powerful. You also don't need Thermite Grenades as much for Chargers or Impalers when you bring the Scorcher, since about half a mag will send both these animals to the big E710 farm in the sky. This lets you more easily take things like Stun Grenades or the new G6 Frag Grenades to spice up your grenade slot with some utility or some chaff clear. In my opinion, the Scorcher has set the new gold standard for what a primary weapon should be. I hope the big wigs on Super Earth take notice and get some of the Assault Rifle feeling as good as the Scorcher does at their roles. I'll try to work on the gunships, but I am not finished. Fucked up. Oh, never mind, I'm dead. <laughs> Gunship fell on me. Coming in second place on this, not a tier list, we have the classic autocannon. On the last patch, Old Reliable had its teeth removed against bots since it took six shots to kill a tank or a tower. But with the adjustments to enemy health, the autocannon has been restored to its former glory, only taking three shots to the weak spot of a tank or a tower to pop it. Aside from just being back to where it was supposed to be, breakpoint wise. The autocannon now comes with programmable ammunition. Now you can choose between armor piercing rounds and flak rounds. The new flak rounds add a whole new layer of utility to the autocannon by giving you a quick and easy answer for both flying enemies and big groups of medium enemies. It's not quite as good as the grenade launcher at popping patrols, but it's pretty close. The addition of flak rounds and their shrapnel is good, but it's one of those situations where I think we'll need to chew on it a bit as a community to really get the most out of these new rounds. Personally, I found the flak to be pretty underwhelming against gunships, but if you get good sight lines on a big heap of medium enemies, it will tear them to pieces in a hurry. Just be wary of your ammo count since it's real easy to just lay on the trigger when you see those juicy kill streaks wandering around the map. The auto cannon has always been a staple on the bot front and recently it's been making some headway on bugs, being a great answer for bile spewers, brood commanders, and bug holes, even though I've been shouting at people for months to use it. Now it's just a little bit better on both fronts, so make sure you give this thing a try. Before we crack on with the final entry in this video, if you want to get me off this potato of a laptop and get on with streaming games, consider supporting me on coffee. I'm about a quarter of the way towards my goal of the new super streaming PC, so y'all's support is greatly appreciated. Now let's talk about one of two completely overpowered weapons in Helldivers 2, the Purifier. Black you... thing, run, no! Oh, they're all over me. <laughs> I, cu I couldn't help you because I got the Purifier. Oh, I just blew myself up. Yep, that's why I couldn't help you. <laughs> <laughs> the Purifier got its damage doubled at full charge and the explosion radius increased pretty dramatically. This turned it from democracy's most embarrassing squirt gun into a plasma cannon of death against pretty much anything that you aim it at. Shoot gunships out of the sky with two shots. Bust down the backs of hulks with two shots. Pop a Devastator and their friends and their neighbors with two shots. 
If you want to go real wild with it, take down a charger from the front with just three full charge shots. Hell, I'm pretty sure if you shot this thing four times at the gloom, it would all get burned up in the fires of liberty. I was a bit shocked to say the least when I tried this thing out for the first time. Not only does it smack pretty much anything to death with just a few full charge shots, you can also fire it like the Scorcher on semi-auto mode if you need something dead in a hurry. Even when you use it on semi-auto mode, charging it for just 0.1 seconds gives you a 50% damage increase. So it does reward you for using its mechanics well. Even still, this thing feels completely busted to use. There is no enemy in the game that it can't kill with its explosive damage and medium penetration. Seriously, y'all, this primary weapon feels like the AMR and grenade launcher had a baby. If they made this thing into a support weapon, I would not be offended. The cherry on top of this support weapon masquerading as a primary is that firing it is completely silent, meaning enemies will only hear the explosion when you fire it near them. This makes it one of, if not the best, primary weapon for stealth divers. The only weakness I've been able to find after playing multiple operations with it on both fronts is that it's terrible against streakers, and it can't close bug holes or fabricators. But aside from that relatively small weakness, it is my honor to introduce to you all the most overpowered weapon in the game, the Purifier. I hope you all have enjoyed this look at some of the most exciting changes in Helldivers 2. I didn't get to cover everything in this video, but try smokes out, they're incredible. But this should give you all a taste of what to look for the next time you visit the armory. So until next time, this is Commissar Kai. Signing out. I mean, no pressure, puzzle. but this is gonna go on YouTube. Oh, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The, no the, pressure the, at I'm all. I'm trying to make myself look busy. Yeah. Okay, that one's not gonna cut. God damn it. The, the pipe puzzle is, is great under pressure because, especially when you're getting swarmed, it's very, very engaging where you have to. Oh, ah, you did it! One. Yay! <laughs> I'll have my editor put in a cheering noise when you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.